So the name is Omar Ambassad, it's 2 8 p.m. February 15, 2021. And this is what the end of an episode of Tachycardia looks like. So I was having a late lunch because I got up late. And um, as usual, as I'm eating, I get scammed on the chest because there's experimentation going on in the building. And uh, the more I eat, the more the power is turned up, the higher the RF reading, and um, the more frequent scans, which puts me into tachycardia. And uh, today was no different as it happened. It's been happening for since 2005. Um, if you notice now that the RF is low, that's the number that's pulsing through zero point one four, and the EF is low. Now that's not the reading on my body. That's the reading just in front of my body. But the oximeter is pulsing through. Uh, so we are at 104. It was down to 90 something before I picked up the camera. And the oxygen level is 95, 96. So I'm going to just hold on to the camera for a while because I want to show you what tachycardia does. It drops your oxygen level. So you notice it went up to 96 there. Notice the drop in the heart rate. Also, you notice that the EF and the RF numbers have dropped. Ah, here we are at 101, 102, and that's what tachycardia is. It skips a whole bunch of numbers in between. It goes from 96 to 104 instantly. I'm assuming that's because the heart is not pumping properly. Because the electrical currents are not flowing properly to make the contractions in time in a rhythmic fashion. I am suspecting that's what happens. Because this is, these are electrical disturbances. So it's settling down. It was, um, it went up to 114. I do have magnets on me. Um, but it's my experience that magnets doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So the graph at the top and the oximeter is not going flat. Um, so there, 94, the oxygen dropped. And you notice the bar near the heart rate, which is going from 103, 104, that bar that's flickering up and down. Notice sometimes it's low and sometimes it's high. So that's the strength of the pulse. So it's going 94, 95, 96, the oxygen level. When I'm shielded and uh, there is no inflammation, um, the oxygen saturation is 98, 99, which is normal, quite, quite normal. So when it drops down to 93, 94, you know something is going on. That should not be going on. And the pattern with me is the microwave scans that I get. And it's consistent while I'm eating, when I'm eating. 
This is, again, it's been happening for years and years. I just didn't have these detectors to figure out what was going on. I was telling the doctors what I was experiencing, but um, I couldn't show them like I'm doing right, I'm showing you right now. So my hand, I suspect, is tagged. Notice the 17 there, then 9.5, the RF. My stomach is still being pulsed, which is why the, um, these numbers in the oximeter is still high. If I shield, these numbers will go down. If I move from this location and I ground and I shield, that number will go down and go back to normal and the oxygen will go up in, in minutes. And I could do that and, and show you afterwards. But uh, I'm just going to see what the tag is on my hand. So my hand is tagged. Um, here, 57. No hand. And of course, the detector is not plugged in. Hand. That's a high RF number there. So my hand is being pulsed uh, because my hand is hurting. So when I put my hand close, saw that huge RF number pulsed through there. That's pain because my hand there, 62, that's my hand being pulsed as I move it, which is causing pain. And if I were to take my blood pressure, which I will, you will see that I'm in pain because the pressure would be high. See, all these numbers are in sync, hand, no hand. Hand, no hand, hand, no hand, hand, no hand. See, it's consistent, very, very, very consistent. Fine. See that 47? That's a pulse in the hand because the hand actually is burning. My shoulder is hurting. My stomach is hurting. Hand. Take the hand away. Hand away. So let me do the EKG.
and it's tachycardia. So I'm going to go shield. <laughs> 